Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to chapter 7. All the while in this video series up until now, we have been putting our constraints within the limits of the solar panel. We are now going to learn how we can connect a solar panel to the device that we want to power, forming what is called a PV system. We will also learn how investment decisions are made in the solar cell world. This video series is proudly sponsored by RS Grassroots Education. You can refer to the Design Smart article link below to find out more materials related to this video. So, for a most basic PV system, try and think about what we need. Well, we need to have the sun, a solar panel, and the device that we want to power, for this case a laptop, and a wire of course. Now, ask yourself, is this sufficient? Not really. What if it's nighttime? We can't use the laptop if there is no sun. So we need to have a battery to store the energy from the sun. There is still something missing here. How can we regulate the electricity that is flowing into the battery and coming out from the battery? Hmm, well for this, we need to have a charge controller. A charge controller limits the rate at which electricity is added to or drawn from batteries. This can prevent overcharging the battery or overpowering the laptop. Remember, the current that comes out from the solar panel is a direct current. Hence, this system that you are seeing only works if the device that you want to power is also a direct current device. Most of our household appliances, if not all, run on alternating current because every single socket in your household provides AC. Even if the device itself runs on direct current, like a laptop, it always comes with an AC to DC adapter, which you usually call your laptop adapter to convert the alternating current coming from the grid to direct current. So, to power most devices in our households, we need an additional device called the inverter to convert direct current to alternating current. This type of system is called an off-grid system as we don't involve the electricity grid. Some homes involve the use of electricity grid, which we call on-grid system. If there is an excess amount of electricity produced by the solar panels, this excess electricity can be sent to the grid. This excess electricity can then be used to offset our electricity bills. Similarly, if there is not enough electricity produced by the solar panels, some of the electricity will then be contributed by the grid. This on-grid system is the most common system that solar energy consumers usually go with. Now, let's talk about money. In the solar cell world, money is king. From what I've shown you, you can see that setting up any PV system is not just about the cost of the solar panels. There are many other investments that are needed to make the entire system work. In fact, generally, the cost of the solar panels only constitute to about 40% of the total cost of the entire system. The others, which we call balance of system, can include wiring, inverters, battery, charge controller, and mountings. Even things like labor costs that is invoked to install the system the land, grid connections, office facilities, and many more can be part of the system. As long as it is a cost related to the installation of solar panels, we can put it under balance of systems. Installing solar panels is an investment. An investment is always something that you are expecting it to reward you in the future. For an electricity consumer like you, the best way to be involved in installing a PV system at your home is to sign up under a scheme provided by your government. 
For instance, the UK has launched the Smart Export Guarantee Scheme since January 2020. This government initiative is to promote more usage of clean energy throughout the UK. In essence, the government requires electricity suppliers to pay small-scale generators, like households, which is you, the electricity that households export back to the national grid by using clean energy. This way, you get to save up on electricity and also contribute to the environment. Well, of course, in order to join the scheme, you need to be from a landed household that you own. The next step is to find an SEG supplier that gives you the best deal. Find out the updated list of SEG suppliers here. The choice of the best SEG dealer involves a little business 101. A term that investors like you should be concerned about is the payback period of the system. Let me show you an example. After obtaining all the information from the supplier, you should put a table consisting of year, item, net cash flow, and cumulative cash flow. A 4 kilowatt peak system usually requires an investment of £5,000. Your cumulative cash flow will then be 5000 At the end of the year of 2022, as this year is 2022, you would have acquired some savings and incentives on your electricity bills. The savings is the cost of electricity that you save or avoided because you use solar panels instead of the normal electricity supply. Incentive, on the other hand, is given for extra electricity imported back to the energy grid based on the calculations by Energy Savings Trust. A 4 kilowatt peak PV system amounts to an annual savings of £244 and an incentive of £94 per year. This total ups to £338 per year. Hence, at the end of 2022, we have £4,662 cumulative cash flow. If we continue doing the math, the entire PV system takes about 15 years to reach its payback period. For this case, the payback point lies somewhere in between 2035 to 2036. This may not seem like an attractive deal to most of us, but the prices of solar panels have been dropping drastically. Furthermore, investing in solar panels does not just return in terms of cost savings, but on a larger scale, we are investing for the future of our environment. And this can only be done if we collectively play our part. Nevertheless, personally, I do hope in the future the government can impose more attractive schemes to promote the usage of solar energy. But if you are really interested in going for the SEG scheme, you can calculate and compare the payback period from different suppliers and choose the one that is the shortest. So far, we have been talking about installing solar panels from a consumer perspective. But how about from the perspective of big energy companies that want to construct a solar farm like this? How would they make an investment decision? Well, in a nutshell, what happens is an investor like the government will issue an invitation to tender. Interested contractors will then submit their tenders. While evaluating these tenders, the investor is usually interested in something called the Levelized Cost of Electricity, LCOE. LCOE is the ratio of all the costs that will incur developing and operating the plant for a fixed period of time to the electricity output throughout the entire period. Hence, the unit is in dollars per kilowatt hour. By making sure to accept a tender with a lower LCOE, electricity can be sold to consumers at a lower price and the solar plant can be operated at a higher profit margin. That's it guys for this video. In this video, we talk quite a bit about the components that make up the entire PV system. Also, how you as a homeowner can get involved in installing solar panels at your home. And how large-scale solar plant projects are evaluated by investors using LCOE. 
This marks the end of the first section of this entire video series. In the next section, we will be progressing into more advanced topics, starting by learning about thin-film solar cells. Take care and goodbye.